Hello guys, welcome back to my channel where we make service now simple and exciting. So this is the start of our new series on scripted REST APIs where you will learn how to harness the power of APIs to connect, integrate and automate like never before. So watch till the end to get the complete information on it. So before getting into the actual implementation, let's understand what integration is, what API is, and why we need scripted REST APIs. So integration enables the communication between two or more applications. It allows them to exchange the data from one application to another application. So it is a way to interact with the third party system in order to move the data from one to another place. Now, if we are talking about integration, let's take an example of integration between ServiceNow and Jira. So let's suppose you have an agile mod model in your ServiceNow instance. So now, you, what you want is whenever any incident is created, so you want the same kind of issue or bug should be created in your Jira instance. So that is when you require a connection between those two applications in order to exchange the data from ServiceNow to Jira. So that is an example of integration. Now, if you are talking about the APIs, so what API is? API is an application programming interface, or I should say that is an endpoint like this. So API is the mediator between you and your application that takes the request from you, go to the server, and get back to you with the response from the server. So let's suppose this is my endpoint. If I uh, if I will hit this endpoint, I will get into my instance. So that is how it works. It took my request. It go it it went to the server and it came back with the response. Now my instance got open. So this is an example of APIs. So let's start with a scripted REST API. So whenever we are going to build API with the help of scripted REST API, the question comes up. What is scripted REST API? Why we need scripted REST API? So I am combining all those two questions, and the answer is scripted REST API is a way to build powerful APIs for our web services in order to restrict the data. So let's suppose if I need to share some of the data or an incident detail from my instance to someone. So what I will do? Should I share my credential with them to access my instance? No, that is not recommended. So in order to share the data, I would be sharing the endpoint for this instance so that that points to the particular resource, not the entire instance. So that is how a scripted REST API restricts the data, the way to build powerful APIs. So let's start building our first scripted REST API. So I will open the application navigator and I'll type scripted REST API. And here you can see that under the system web services, you have the option scripted REST API. I open this option. Now here you can see that we have some out of the box pre-built defined APIs. So if I open any of one, you can see that we have a name, API ID, active status, protection policy, application, API namespace, etc. So what I'll do, I'll just click on new in order to create a new API. Now, again, I need to provide a name for my API. So in our scenario, what we are doing it, we will be retrieving the incident record from the incident table with the help of scripted REST API. So I'll just type get incident. The moment I type name and press tab, API ID got auto-populated. You can see that application API namespace got auto populated so i'll just save it now after saving this you can see that we have a default acl scripted risk external default it means that this endpoint can access the external systems as well with the help of this acl now if i come back to this content negotiation where we have a default supported request format it means that it deals with this application json application xml text xml now if you want any specific content to be deal with you can simply override default supported request format and you can provide your own format now if i'll come back to the documentation part where we have short description that that gives a brief summary about this scripted rest api what it does 
Now, if you also want to provide any external documentation link, you can simply provide it in here in the section. We have some related links as well. We'll talk later. Now, the very important thing, we have resources, request header, query parameters. Now, resources is the way to take a request to the server. So we have five different types of resources, which is get, post, put, patch, and delete. So let's start from here. I'll just click on new. Now you can see that under the source, we have HTTP method called get, post, put, patch, and delete. So it is loading. You can see that in the HTTP method, we have get, post, put, patch, delete. Now in the name section, I'll provide get incident details. Now HTTP method should be get as we are retrieving the data from the server. So in order to retrieve the data, we, we always use this get method. Now in the related path, we, we need to provide some custom path. So I'm providing incident here. You can provide it based on out your interest. So I'll just save it. Now we'll start writing our code. So here we have two important things, which is query parameters and path parameters. So let's, uh, let's assume that if your website, if your endpoint is a library, then query parameter or a path parameter is the book which you want to read. So here I'll just type where query param. I'll just declare one variable called query param equal to request dot query params dot category. As in our scenario, we'll be dealing with the incident table. So what this query param will do, it will filter the data while retrieving it from the server. So we will be filtering the data based on the category. So I'll simply glide the incident table. New glide record. Incident. I will add the query incident dot add query where I'll provide category. And here I'll provide query param. As the value of category, which will be providing the query, this will be stored in this variable and it will be processed further. INC dot query. I'll use while INC dot next. I'll declare one, M one empty object. Now here, what I'll do, object dot number equal to inc dot number object dot short description. So the field which we are providing that will be returned in the response inc dot short underscore description. object dot category inc dot category now i'll just push this object into ar array so for for that i need to define an empty array where ar equal to this now arr dot push obj now i'll set the response body response dot set body arr and i'll save it now as of now we have written the code so whenever we will hit the endpoint what it will do it will pro query the incident table and it will filter the data based on the category 
and it will return with these three fields in the response body which is number short description and category now if i'll go to the related links we have explore rest api so i'll just open it so rest api explorer is the another powerful tool to test the rest api so you can see that we have our method get incident detail now this is the endpoint now in the add query parameter i'll just provide my query which is category is hardware i'll simply click on send now we got the internal server error let us check what is the error reference error query param is not defined okay we'll come back to the yes so i think here we have some minor error type error i will simply just correct it and i'll save it again i will click on explore rest api i'll provide the add query parameter which is category is hardware and i'll click on send again we got the internal server error which is reference query param is not defined Let's come back to the content now query param oh my bad i'll just copy here and paste here and again and save it and again click on explore rest api i hope this work category hardware and i'll just simply click on send now you we can see that we got the status code which is 200 okay now you can see that we got the only incidents which has the category hardware along with the number and short description which you saw here which we written in this code like category is query param here in the query param whichever the query parameters we are providing you can see that under this query parameters which is categories hardware so it is filtering out the data based on this query so this is how it works now we have one more way to retrieve the data based on some unique identification with the help of path parameters. So what I will do, I will simply come in this code. And I will save it. Now, if we are using the path parameter, what it will do, it will take that query as a mandatory query and it will filter out the data from the database. So for that, we need to make some changes in the relative path. So in the relative path, I'll simply provide the curly braces and here I'll provide the society. In our scenario, we will be going to fetch a particular incident based on the society. And I will save it again. Now I have defined my relative path as curly basis society. Now I'll start writing my logic. Again, I will declare an empty variable. Now where path equal to request dot path params dot society. Now whatever the society I will provide as a query, it will get stored in this variable. Now I'll process it. I will glide to the incident table, new glide record. Incident. I will add the query and query would be sys ID. Should be the sys ID which is stored in this path variable. So I'll use this variable inc dot query inc now i have queried the data now if inc dot next i'll simply define one more object one empty object now here object dot number equal to inc dot number 
object dot sys id just to confirm the sys id we are providing we get the same data based on that particular sys id i'll simply provide inc dot sys id now object dot short description this description equal to inc dot short description and here i'll provide object dot category equal to inc dot category now i will push this object into my empty array arr dot push object now i will set the response response dot set body arr now as of now what we have done we have defined an empty array we have declared a, a variable called path under which our sys id will get stored while querying the end or data from the table we have glided to the incident table where we are adding the query sys id should match to this enter sys id which gets stored into this path variable now we are querying the data and we will be returning these four field value which is number sys id short description and category and finally we are pushing our object into array array and we are setting that response body now i will save it now if i click on explore rest api here you can see that sys id is showing a mandatory query parameter path parameter so here as a path i need to provide this id which will stored here and it will query the data based on that particular path parameters so i will go to the incident table incident dot list now you can see that we have multiple incidents so what i'll do i'll simply open one incident and i will copy the sys id of this particular incident so i will just copy the sys id now here i'll provide the sys id i will click on send request now you can see that we got the response which is 200 now if you see the number is 243 the number is 243 sys id should sys id is b512e1 b512e1 and short description category short description and category so this is what we can easily do it with the help of path parameter so if you have any doubts just do let me know in the comment section thank you